Every hour of life has its own moment of truth. And who better to call it to our attention than the man who parted the Red Sea? <laughs> Chuck Heston. You know, when I uh, got here tonight, I wasn't certain what to expect, except a, a great party, variety clubs, and uh, Francis Albert kind of guarantee that. A party for the president and the first lady on a first name basis, that's... It's a great idea, just like the old days. Actually, back at the Screen Actors Guild, it, uh, it wasn't Dutch, it was Ron, or Ronnie to the old hands. I, I was new on the board then. We were in the middle of a tough strike, and he had appointed me to the negotiating team. I remember coming home very late one night after a long session, 4 a.m., Lydia woke up. Honey, I said, we've got a leader. Yeah. You could say that. That's what I was thinking about when I watched the two of them come into the room tonight. But they walk a road now that we can't possibly know, and they walk it for us. A little less than five years ago, in Washington at the ceremonies marking his first inauguration, I said, tomorrow at high noon, on the steps of the Capitol, one man will take in his hand the most awesome power and influence ever held by a single human being. He will be thenceforth forever wrapped in legend and myth. He will also pick up a burden of responsibility that has no known counterpart in the civilized world. Ronald Reagan will become the lineal descendant of Washington and Adams. Jefferson and Jackson, Lincoln, Wilson, Roosevelt. With them, he will be linked to the very birth date of this republic. And so he has. So he has. So here we are tonight, his friends. We watch him laugh, we see Nancy's foot tap to the music. But we know, sir, you are us. To the world, you are America. Your yes is our yes. Your no is ours. You are every man and woman in this nation. You speak to mankind in our name. You carry the torch that was flamed by Patrick Henry's passion for liberty. Tom Paine's common sense and Tom Jefferson's most uncommon wisdom. Lifted by the memory of those soldiers, known and unknown, whose bodies, in your words, lie in the only foreign soil this country occupies. The president. What do we pray for him? What do we wish from him and for him? What can he pledge to us? What can we say to help him? American writers have spoken eloquently to this question. Among them, Thomas Wolfe, William Faulkner, F. Scott Fitzgerald have said, it's a fabulous country, the only fabulous country where miracles can happen all the time. I refuse to accept the end of man. He will prevail because alone among all creatures, he has a soul, a spirit capable of compassion and endurance and sacrifice. In this country, there is a willingness of the heart. And as you lead us into the uncertain, beleaguered future, in the broad swell of continent between those shining seas, let me say for all of us, Mr. President, in the words of a song you'll remember, God shed his grace on thee. Mm -hmm.